We are in the dawn of a new era. We thought we were alone. Rangers. The last survivors. But as the skies clear and the radiation fades, we're picking up more distant signals. And I'll be honest, what I'm hearing out there scares the living shit out of me. Don't listen to that murderer, you fool! Vargas may call himself a general now, but he and his rangers are still the same dog-killing savages they were 15 years ago. The Red Scorpions will protect you people. The rangers are no good lying chicken. Let our muzzle flash be the light in the darkness, brothers and sisters. Our shining blades are the beacon that lead sinners to salvation. Some call us murderers or lunatics, but we are an army. God's army. Put on earth to wipe the slate clean. Can I get an amen, brothers and sisters? Matthias is your savior. He will make you into a perfect union of man and machine. A race of synthetic warriors who will destroy those butchers in Arizona and bring our clean and perfect future to all corners of the world. We must remain vigilant, Rangers. We must look to our borders and beyond because the enemy is coming, whether we're ready for them or not. Ranger Citadel, this is Ag Center. Come in. We're under attack. It's the plant. Please come in. Ag Center, this is Citadel Base. Please state your situation. Over. Oh, thank God. Please, please hurry. The plants are attacking. They're killing us. Oh, God. The door. They're breaking down the fucking door. Ranger Team Echo One, we have a distress call from the Ag Center. They're reporting unusual plant activity with casualties. Time to earn your pay, cupcakes. Hello, Wasteland 2 backers. My name is Chris Keenan. I'm the producer here at InXile. This is our first early gameplay video, and we're pretty happy to show off our progress so far. So before we get too far into the Agricultural Center, I'll explain some of the major UI elements. On the upper left, you'll see the party list, which is led by my two-year-old son. A major feature you'll hear a lot of us talking about is player customization, uh, which means that I had to import a picture of him when he was sick a few months back. We'll also have a bunch of in-game portraits that you can choose from if you don't want to import one. Finally, rounding out the list, we have a resident dog designer, Chewy. So, early on, we promised customizable UI. You can drag each one of the modules around the screen to change its size or orientation by unlocking it. On the lower left, we have the action bar. You'll find a lot of the general gameplay buttons here, your equipped weapon, action point indicators, and combat. The middle is a skill bar. Uh, there's over 30 skills in the game, and you can put your six most used per character in each one of these slots. And this one is the text window, which we use very heavily to keep the same narrative feel of the original Wasteland. Definitely keep an eye on it throughout the demo. Ag Center, this is Citadel Base. Be advised. Ranger Team Echo One is on site and approaching your position. Help is on the way. Now we're coming across some enemies for combat. By selecting the icon for perception, you can do a skill check on the enemies and have a possibility of seeing some additional enemy information uh, as well as their perception cone. So if you cross paths with that perception cone with any of the rangers, it starts combat. Right now we're going to spread out the rangers, get ready for the first encounter, and here it goes. So now that combat has started, we go into a turn-based mode. The rule set is built on the original Wasteland and Mercenary Spies and Private Eyes uh, with some tweaks to it. So we use things like distance-based modifiers for a chance to hit, including you know a higher percent chance as enemies get closer to you, 
Uh, enemy size and speeds also affect your chance to hit. Larger enemies are much easier to hit than uh, smaller guys or very quick enemies. As well, we tack on friendly fire too, so you really have to pay attention to where your team is standing within combat and you strategy to move around them. Uh, another thing that we're doing is making sure that sounds are also alerting enemies. So if you fire a shot somewhere uh, outside of the range of enemies, they don't care. If you're close to them, then they might actually go to alert the sound and see uh, they can figure out who shot it. So we do have a hex based system as well. You can see here that one of the player customization options is we default it off, but if you want to play with the hex grid on, you are more than welcome to do so. How you spec your attributes during character creation changes each one of these characters pretty drastically. Our backers helped us come up with the classic system, which is uh, coordination, luck, awareness, strength, speed, intelligence, and charisma. Uh, coordination in combat gives you additional action points, basically meaning that uh, you're more efficient with each of your actions. Awareness increases your initiative, generally gives you a few more turns in any one combat encounter. Strength gives you uh, a higher maximum constitution and melee damage. Uh, constitution is our version of hit points. And speed will increase your movement in combat. So between the trade-offs of where you put the points in each one of those different attributes can give you a, a pretty vastly different character for combat. As you might have noticed by now, we're using a, a, a two-stage fog of war system. The first layer is areas that you haven't yet explored, and the second one is what you have explored but is just outside of your current perception radius. And now we're going to show an ambush maneuver. You can select multiple rangers and have them fire on an enemy at once to start combat. You don't have to select just a single type. We're coming up on our first locked door, which is going to show off some of the skill usage. So I can go down and select lockpick with Chewy and try and use it on the door. You'll see that it said it was a medium skill difficulty. It takes a little while for the skill bar to go up and he failed. So in character creation, he wasn't necessarily specced with a very high lockpick skill. I can try somebody else, like Natasha, who does have a high lockpick skill. Her said simple, which makes it a lot easier for her to open these doors. As you progress through the game, the difficulty of the obstacles will continue to get harder and at the more that you use each one of your skills, the better that those skills will get. So here we had a different guy, Chewy is the safe cracker. So he went in, was able to open it up, we got a canteen, now we're moving out. So I told you earlier to keep an eye on the description text window and one reason for that is that a lot of times we will give you clues as you go through the game for things that you can do within the world. This one here says Ramshackle Gate looks ready to collapse under the slightest encouragement so that gives me a hint. Now I can select Brute Force with Natasha, have her use it on the gate, success and now we made it through. We'll grab the ranger team, move them through the giant vegetables. It looks like they spotted an enemy up north. And we'll use perception on him to see what he can see. So this looks like a good opportunity to take somebody, bring him around to a cover point and see if we can flank him from behind with the other team. So we're going to take MCA, put him into cover, and have him take a quick shot at the Wrecking Crew. The Wrecking Crew guy goes to cover. So cover plays a pretty big part in the game. When you are in cover, Anybody shooting at you has a penalty to their chance to hit. So you can see by the other guys flanking from behind, they're getting a much higher chance to hit with equivalent weapons than MCA is in cover. 
And they took him out. We'll get the team back together. Move on towards the huge central building, which is the entrance to the agricultural center. So anytime you see that bubble icon, that's going to enter you into a dialogue. And this is the first dialogue window that we have popping up. Looks like she let us in. The ranger's going to make their way into the central complex. After we enter our fake level load, because we haven't implemented it yet, we end up in our first interior. Now the rangers are introduced to Kathy Lawson. Both Kathy Lawson and Matt Forrestal were some of our first thousand dollar backers. In fact, Matt was the very first one that we had. This also gives a good glimpse of the keyword system that we're using. So on the left hand side you have your local keywords and those are ones that Kathy specifically cares about. As you go through the conversation, you will branch into different keywords or you might close off some other ones and the ones that you keep will go into the regional keyword section. Also big keywords like uh, missions or anything that is a uh, large item within the world will show up in the regional keyword section. Anything on the right hand side, most people on the map will have some sort of response or reactivity to. Kathy here is essentially giving the rangers their first mission to do inside the agricultural center. And they make their way over to Matt Forrestal. One big advantage we have with this game is that we've already said we're not going to do a ton of voiceover work on it. So being that it's text-based, we can do pass after pass of reactivity going through there. So we can make sure that people are responding to specific items that you're wearing, to you know male or female in the party, to your charisma level, your strength level, all kinds of different variables. As well, we said that we were going to have the ability to type in specific keywords that aren't shown in either of the lists on the side. So here you saw him talk about Vargas. Anybody that played the original game remembers Snake Vargas, and sure enough, he has a line to say about that. We'll go ahead and finish up the conversation with Matt, and it looks like he's pretty happy with how it went. So tying back into the narrative approach that we're taking, we want to make sure that most of the items in the world had some sort of description to them that gave you more information about the world. So you'll see that the player chose perception, looked around, anything that highlighted is something that has some sort of descriptive text to it, if you pass a skill check. Some of the descriptive texts you come across are put in there pretty much just to entertain us. When we originally started the project, we thought we were going to leave a static isometric camera and the main reason for that was due to uh, the art production. We didn't know if we were going to have enough time to be able to prop out all corners of the world 
and our artists so far have done a fantastic job with help from the community so we are able to actually move the camera around and allow you to control the direction of the camera. One of the things that we loved about the original Wasteland was that there was more than one way to solve the same obstacle. You could use strength on a door to break it down, you can use an RPG to blow it up, you could use demolitions on the door, you could pick it, and we want to make sure that we're keeping the same thing for this game. So lockpick isn't going to be the solution for every single door that you find. This one here, brute force works, later on maybe demolitions work. Now that we've broken into the door, we can get some loot. Looks like we're going to pick up an AK-97 and some ammunition. Now we'll grab the rest of the team and continue exploring the halls of the Agricultural Center. Ranger Team Echo One, this is Citadel Base. Received word from Master Hall that you were on site and en route to irrigation shutoff. Please confirm. Over. Here's a door that the Rangers probably should be using alarm disarm on, and when they don't, bad shit happens. <laughs> First off, I want to apologize to everybody for having to sit there and listen to me for the last 15 minutes. And second, we everybody in Exile wants to thank each and every one of you that helped pledge for the game. We really hope that you're happy with where your money's gone. Team could not be more excited to be making this game. I think we're uh, on a pretty good track, and we hope you think so too. Thanks for watching.